Hey, I'm Konstantin and this is a small yet quite capable print farm of my university. These printers have been running non-stop 24-7 for the past, let's say, half a year, year maybe. Well, except for now, otherwise I wouldn't be filming. And I want to show you how I built them. These printers are called HFU bots, named after my university, Hochschule Fortwan. They were first built by a group of other students. Conceptually they worked, but having already built a couple of printers, I knew how much potential was being left on the table by a multitude of factors, including mechanical, electrical and thermal design factors. I had already modified this printer before filming, just to test and prove my point. And as for the other two... Everything that was going to be exchanged had to come up first. So I gathered some friends that were eager to help with the demolition party. They all dipped once the actual work began. Now I want to make sure to point out that the students who originally built these printers did an excellent job considering their lack of experience and their financial limitations. This is absolutely not meant to be disrespectful in any way as their task was to build three 3D printers on which they definitely delivered. See, everyone with a golden wallet can build a nice printer. I just happened to garner the required amount of trust by, well, lobbying as one does with unscientific claims and false premises, which allowed me to just dump a bunch of money at these in the hopes that at least something would stick. So my peers have told me that it's more efficient to do one printer and then the other one. Um, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> What's your opinion? Well, I Yours. think uh, whatever makes you feel comfortable, you have to do it because you are the master of it, right? <laughs> and everyone is just going to follow your orders, right? I would say we do both at the same time. Okay. I wouldn't say. Yeah, he's just checking whether your opinions match. There, yeah, there. <laughs> there are two kinds of <laughs> opinions. Good, yeah. Yeah, the right. wrong opinion and my opinion. Ah, the print is a Ah, yes, mechanical design. The overall mechanical design was defined by my predecessors to be a derivative of the Mendel style 3D printers, which, although I have a lot of nostalgia attached to those, unfortunately, it's my least favorite design because of multiple reasons. First of all, the overall footprint is just huge because the bed has to move back and forth by its entire length in order for the nozzle to reach all the way across. It's not a big issue here, admittedly, but that doesn't make it any more appealing to me. Secondly, the moving mass of the y-axis is very high and is, compared to other design implementations, completely unnecessary. It also doesn't help that the build plate of these printers is exceptionally large with its size of 400 by 400 millimeters, as the weight is roughly proportional to its side length squared. And this weight estimation doesn't even take into consideration that an increase in weight also means that the underlying structure has to be adapted, which increases the weight even more. And don't worry, this is the last one, but fixing such a flimsy and weight-optimized bed to the Y-gantry causes mechanical and especially thermal issues, where the bed will thermally expand and contract, but can't because its attachment points have to withstand high acceleration forces. This issue is close to impossible to solve mechanically, but I found a workaround using a bunch of data and a bit of mass, which I'll share in a later video. Es ist mir auch die Liebsten, wenn die da ähm, eine schwarze Schraube darstellen und die dann aber silber ist. Die Wichse.
since I had to work with the mechanical design of my predecessors, I kind of had to make the best out of it, which the best, <laughs> that's kind of a vague and unspecific term to be thrown around like that, isn't it? That's a rhetorical question, by the way, because <laughs> yes, it is. But what should be the best? Should the printers be able to print really nicely? Yes, of course they should. Um, should they be able to print really fast? Well, of course they should. Should the printers be able to print reliably? Well, <laughs> I mean, of course they should be able to print reliably. Maybe you're starting to see the, the issue that I'm trying to point out right now. But let's take it a bit further. How about um, repairability? I mean, I won't be the last person who will do the occasional repair on the printer, so it should also be repairable um, or easy to repair. And how about ease of use? I mean, the, the students that use these printers don't really know much about 3D printers, so um, it would be very beneficial if the printers were easy to use. And what about a like on this video? Do you see the problem now? You just can't have it all. But that's also what made designing these printers so exciting for me in the first place. You know, I just don't really care about repairability and ease of use with my own printers. After all, I'm the one who built them, so of course I know how to repair and use them. But with these printers, I had to consciously put my ideals aside and encounter problems that I would have never encountered if I had built them for myself. Take this printer, for example. As I said, this is the first printer that I built just to test and prove my design. It prints much nicer than the other two, but it does so at the cost of decreased reliability, repairability, and ease of use. So basically, it took me one entire printer to let go of this concept that being able to print nice looking prints is the topmost priority. But with all that being said, all in all, I'm really happy with the performance of the HFU bots. These are just some prints that I picked out of the lab. As you can see, they're small prints, they're really big prints, um, they get used a lot. They each already have around 100 days of total print time under the belt, which amounts to around 30 kilograms of PLA per printer. They work reliably, so there weren't any big issues. The print quality is okay, they're easy to use. So yeah, all in all, I'm really happy. Naturally, there's always something to improve on, but I'm happy to say that I'm starting to reach this point of diminishing returns. There's however one thing I do still want to do and that is to properly calibrate the chopper parameters for the stepper motors. I'm having some issues with vibrations, which you can see on this part, for example, and I'm hoping that by manually calibrating those parameters, I'll be able to mostly solve this issue. But on the other hand, I also have bigger fish to fry, a bigger fish, that is. So, uh, yeah, my priorities are a bit skewed right now. I'm also fully aware that this video probably just created more questions than answers, but you can just ask those questions in the comment section below and maybe I can elaborate on them in a future video. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>